Hey everyone, tonight we're going to be working on the Sega Turbo cockpit. I was playing it the other night, and then all of a sudden I lost my steering. Like, the steering went completely out, I had nothing. Um, so I pulled the game out of its hole, and it's on wheels, like, you know, a lot of these cockpits are. So I, I dragged it out, and I'm inside the back of it. And I'll show you a couple things. I'll take my flashlight with me. So yeah, my steering wasn't working. So, we're inside the cabinet here. And here we are, we're inside, and here's the board. Better light would work better. And I'm looking at this connector here. This is connector B, A, B, C, D, here on the side. And connector B goes to the steering back there, if you can see it. And there's two LED lights on the steering. And if they're on, it's working. And if they're not on, obviously, you're not getting a signal to the steering board there. Now, there's some little optos in there that, you know, determine where the position is of the car when you're driving. So let me plug this back in. I'll show you what I've started with so far. I decided, you know what, I should probably film this. I've pulled out my first little pin here. I'm going to put it back in, and I'll show you what it's doing or not doing. And, of course, it might work. Who knows? But we'll show you what's going on, and we'll, we'll go from there. So if we go ahead and start a game, put a credit in. Okay. Oh, now it's working? It's super inconsistent. What the heck? Okay. I'm gonna end up doing this anyway because it I can I can tell this is the issue. Let's go back to the inside here. My LED lights are not on that board, but when I wiggle the wire up here, if I move it back and forth, I can get sometimes, I don't know if you guys can see it way back there, it's like starting to blink, but it's not doing what it needs to do. Um, so I'm gonna repin it. And if you don't have pins, I'm gonna show you what you can do. So let me get everything out for you. Okay, now we have some light in here. Much better. All right, so we're gonna go over here, we're gonna look at this connector. Let's see. It is B, it's super loose. Like, it shouldn't be this loose. These ones are nice and tight. This is loose. It shouldn't come off like that. And, that's a, and this is common with these types of connectors here. So what I'm going to do is I have my connector here and let's see if I can actually zoom in so you can see what I do. All right, we'll try this, hopefully you guys can see it. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these pins out. You don't need a special tool to remove these pins and anybody can do this. I use, you know, precision, like the uh, eyeglass screws. It's got a nice thin flat blade on it. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna come in here, you're gonna push from this side. There's nothing on this side to push from. You're going to push down and kind of slide the pin towards the back. And I'll show you, there's like a little barb that it catches on. Of course, you know, I say it, it never happens the first time. I can see the barb. You know, it's really just because I'm doing things on camera. It's like, come on, Tim, you've done this a bajillion times and now you can't get it? It's like amateur hour over here. Hold on. Smallest flathead. Come on, well, here we go. We can do it. Go. There we go. See that? It should be that easy. Hopefully you guys saw that would happen. And then it just pulls right out. What happens is these pins over time, they get a little weak. So what you could do if you don't have new pins is bend this out a little bit. And they're pretty soft, because you know, they're you know like 38 years old. But you could pull this out and make it so that it's a tighter connection. 
and that's one thing you can do. Or you can put a new pin on. And if you are capable of putting a new pin on, then you know that's the best way to go. But if you don't have new pins and you don't have those tools, what you can do is you can pull the pin out and then just pull that out enough. Let's see how far we can get it. You know, we'll pull out a lot and then we'll just slide it back in. And it should make a tighter connection. And you'd go through and you would do that with all of them. I'm actually gonna pull this out and replace that pin. And we'll put everything back together and hopefully it works. So I've done the first pin, the yellow one is in. I'm going to now remove this next blue pin here, this blue wire. Right, we'll remove it. Or I'll cut myself with a screwdriver, one or the other. Come on, Tim, you can do it. I can feel it. You want to go. There we go. I can feel it. You're moving. There it is. All right. Cool. Got it. We'll pull it out. Look at that. This thing is all beat up. There's like no tension left on it at all. So we'll go ahead and we'll replace that. So we'll cut it off. Oh, wrong one. It fell in there somewhere. We'll get it out later. Oh, there it is. We got it. We get a new pin. Now I'm using some old pins from, well, not old, well, I got these recently from Bob. Bob Roberts. He lives, or at least, I hope he still does. I need his stuff still. So he got some good prices on pins still. Happened to pick that up in January or February. Ordered a bunch of stuff like that. And then, if you guys recall, if you've never done a pin before, you're gonna need the crimping tools. I actually got this from Bob Roberts a long time ago, um, but it has this A and B part on it. And that A and B part is what you need. Okay. And I always like to do B first, then A, because B actually holds onto the wire. But I know you probably should do A first. It's just kind of how I've been doing it. So we got it all lined up. And we'll go ahead and we'll... Oh, you know what I need to do first? We gotta strip that wire. Duh. Jumping ahead here, I'm too excited. You don't need much. Just a little bit'll do. As we listen to Outrunner in the back crash a bunch of times, then we'll go ahead, put it in, and we'll crimp it. And the reason I do B first is because I like to make sure that it's actually connected to the copper part of the wire. And we'll come in and do A. And then we should be good. It's not going anywhere. And then we go ahead and we, we put it in. Make sure we put it in the right way. And these new ones are definitely a little bit tighter. That's good. And we tug on it as well to make sure it doesn't come back out. And we're going to go ahead and we'll do the last two wires and hopefully we're good to go. Okay, we finished putting all the pins on this B connector here for the steering. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put it on. It already feels a lot tighter. I should, and I can't wiggle it off. That's a good thing. Let's go ahead and turn it on and see what happens. We'll get this light out of here. And uh, let's turn it on. All right, moment of truth. I didn't see any lights come on in the back like I had before, but Maybe they're not on if the game's not being played. Start. All right, we're steering. That's good. 
All right, cool. Let me go back here, see if there's any lights on now. Ah, now there are lights on. See those lights on in the back? I guess they only come on when the game comes on. That's perfect. All right, we are in good shape now. Now let's play a couple rounds. So what do we need to do this? If we're gonna replace the pins, you're gonna need some of the 156 pins, 0.156 pins, and those you're essentially replacing these pins here that we cut off. Um, if you don't have those pins, I remember we used the screwdrivers here, little precision screwdrivers to undo everything. If you don't have those pins, you can take them, take one, and try to bend it out. So you can, as you can see, once you get it out of that connector, pretty flat looking, you're gonna bend it out quite a bit, and you'll go ahead and you'll push it back into the connector and hope that it works. Again, no guarantee, but it's a good way to get around putting new pins in. And the motion that we made, you know, if we're to do this, if this is the pin going into the connector on my left hand side here, what I basically did is I took the flathead screwdriver, I pushed it away from the back of the connector down, and then I pushed it out. That's kind of like the best motion I can give you. So basically what we did is we went down and towards where the connector connects and then back because there's a little barb on it. And uh, I don't know if you guys can see it because it's tiny. It's probably not gonna focus. Oh, there it is. See, it's right there in the middle. That little barb catches it. Basically what you're trying to do is push it down and out. All right, let's play around. So as you guys, <laughs> as you guys, I'm not from New York. As you guys may notice, my steering wheel here is actually a Sega Outrun steering wheel, but it does have this correct center cap. I finally did get the correct steering wheel for this. So I just need to put it on, but I'll play with this for now. So, you should, this position where the camera is absolutely precarious. I've got a tripod right next to me, but we'll see how we do here. Try to get, I've got the cars passed in just barely in the screen, the top of the steering wheel on the screen. I'll have to go with that. I got the other score there. My shifting hand is underneath the tripod. Okay, I can get everything good enough. Let's go ahead and start a game and see if it still works. Steering, all right, perfect. Uh, don't crash yet, Tim. I do really like this game. I'm not very good right now. I like Monaco is a lot of fun as well. The original Monaco that came before this. If you ever guys ever played both of them kind of back to back, what you'll do, you'll, you'll notice is that a lot of it, it's very similar of a game. This is just like that pseudo 3D look versus that 2D top down. Um, I would not mind a Monaco cocktail, I'm not cocktail, cockpit to go right next to this. That would be a lot of fun. Then I have uh, Outrun, Turbo, and Monaco, the whole series in a row right there. I mean, even Monaco has that ambulance that comes up too to, and like speeds right by you. You get to go in the tunnel. This is my favorite part in the cockpit. The subwoofer kicks in when you're in the tunnel. It's like I kind of want to crash in here just to get a subwoofer go. It does sound super crackly though, and every other turbo I've played has sounded similar. I don't know if it's just age or the nature of the beast here. All right, we, we passed 41 cars. That's good. Woo! I like when you can go through a car like that. bend because it turns into like the side of the highway cliff thing just want to get yeah, there it is i hate this one that transition is horrible i do love this game come on all right go around all right there we go i would take my hand out from the shifter but i can't because the tripod's in the way 
And as soon as you realize that those little graphics glitches there are hills, your perception of the entire game changes. You're like, oh yeah, that's just a hill. And there's cars that disappear and come back. It's just weird how they did the hill. Oh, I like this stage, it's pretty. Sunset Boulevard. Ooh, go, 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 go! Oh, good. Another 41 cars. We got extended play. We got another car around the... That was round two. 20,000. Okay, look at that car driving in the grass. You see that? Two cars, that's good. Oof, that was a poor decision. Woo, that is skinny! Oh, get out of there. That is one skinny bridge. They have that same bridge in Monaco. All right, almost 22. That's good enough. It is not my highest, but it is good. I'm glad the steering is working. And that is a common thing to go on a lot of these older games with those style connectors. They do need to be repinned. I mean, they get tired. The metal is just tired. Anyway, thanks again for watching. I noticed I said it was 38 years old. It's actually 39 years old. It's 1981. So, 39 year old game with original connectors. It's time. Uh, you, I believe you can get what's called the Trifurcon connectors, which are slightly more expensive you know a few pennies a pe extra a piece but they are a nicer connector but honestly if these other connectors last another uh, 30 years um that'll well be past its lifetime of me probably be able, probably being able to get parts for this to keep it going um this is good thanks again for watching as always if you have any questions please feel free to let me know um this is one of my favorite twitch racing games next to monaco i really love outrun i should be playing it more maybe we'll, we'll play it play it next next time all right guys thanks a lot for watching and take it easy